Welcome back, it is Thursday and that means acting analysis for animators and today we're going to take a look at The Haunting of Hill House. Alright, so for this show there was a lot of stuff that I liked for the first season, but apparently in my notes it just says season 1, episode 1, and that's it. So the two little short things I'm going to show, I know there was more, but I was completely fascinated by the show, the, the stories, the characters, the creepiness. I got to watch it again and I'm sure I will find more things and I'll do a part two and so on and so on. But for now, it's going to be two things. And I know there's more, but it's also stuff that's not, I wouldn't say super helpful. There's a scene in episode six, I think, where one of the characters has a really, really long monologue and it's fantastic. It starts a bit further away, the camera slowly creeps in and you can see this as I fast forward through the shot and he just has such a fascinating voice. The story is cool, the performance is great and it goes on and on and on and intercuts at one point but even then I think it was just an actual intercutting and then the, the actual one long take is even longer. In here what I'm showing now is over three minutes long, it might have been about four minutes total. Absolutely fantastic. But again, I can't really show that because then it's, hey, watch this, it's great, do the same thing. That, that's not quite helpful. So if you've been watching my acting analysis clips, you know I'm picking out things that you might just take the ID and plug it into your shot. It's a bit more actionable in terms of usage, I hope. So, but for now, let's go to the first one. So the first one has this little girl sleeping and she slowly wakes up and there is just some sleep paralysis, just some problems with nightmares and things that she sees. But what I'm looking at is this, this moment here. And then you can see the heavy breathing that continues on through here. And then as the shot continues, there's a cool camera reveal, the turn of the camera, and you can see what she's looking at. And it's cool with the hair that is down and then it turns into more of a upstanding profile shot, it's kind of cool. But what I'm looking at specifically is something like this, where your character goes like this, big eyes, and then you can see through here, freaking out, heavy breathing, there's panic setting in. And to me, it's like a very, very long anticipation. Now, I wouldn't really put all of this in the shot for your reel because it's really, really long and people might click away and it's not that interesting. It's a tricky thing to recommend. But I like the idea. I like the idea of your character doing something. This might be some secondary action where they're picking up things, doing something, and maybe then you have that moment of... And then the heavy breathing looking up or something. And then as an audience, you go, what did the character just see or hear or realize? And I think this could be really cool as a, a different approach in terms of anticipation. And it kind of draws the audience in. And you might be able to get away with a longer shot because as it gets interesting and you're invested in the shot and you're wondering what is the character seeing or, or hearing, then you can draw out the shot and then make it longer and then have a good payoff with whatever it is. This could be a comedy, this could be something actually freaky, whatever you want to do. And technically, as you can see, is fairly simple in terms of big reveal, big eye change and heavy breathing. But I think in terms of how you can apply this for a shot in terms of entertainment value, or just again, drawing an audience in where they wonder oh, what's gonna happen. I think this could be really, really cool. And in general, I'm just a fan of characters reacting to things. It's not always pantomime doing an action or lip sync and performing to the sync of the audio, but it's something where the character hears or sees or, or understands something and there's a thought process and you can see the, the gears turning visually on the face and then they have some sort of reaction. And I think that's always really, really cool to see on the character that you animate. It's, it's, it's just something where the character comes alive and it's just cool to observe and kind of almost read into the character's eyes and you wonder what did they see and maybe they saw that or maybe they heard that and so on. Anyway, I thought that was kind of cool. Now the second one is really one of those typical things that I just pick out where you might go, really? But it's something that's not even a big deal in the actual scene, but it made me think. Well, let's show you first and then we'll talk about it. And by we, I mean me. So as the character finishes his uh, action here, you see the other character in the back bringing tea. And she says, do you want some tea? He goes, yes. There's the pickup here. And then she keeps on holding and he keeps on talking. And, and then that's it. Now, why am I showing you this? When I was watching this, and this is probably because when I have tea, it's usually warm to hot. And this seems, you know, not hot. Maybe he has a ton of calluses and he doesn't really care about the heat. Maybe somewhat cold. And it kind of struck me, I know this is super weird, but there's something about what if the character, when he picks up, or she, the cup, it gets hot, and there's a bit of a release of the grip, a bit of a pause, and then maybe the tea only comes to here, and then he re-grips 
the cup up here or maybe she swings it around and he has a better handle and grabs it here. She lets kind of go. This could be an interesting handoff in terms of props. This could be something where his hand goes over and then they touch and that's the beginning of a romantic relationship and so on and so on. But something that's interesting to me, and I know this is something very simple, but just that to me is interesting, A, because of prop usage and just how there's something that influences the character. And again, I talked about that before, where it's maybe the weather, something hot or cold or windy, but it doesn't have to be a central part of the shot. It could just be where someone picks something up and just this, this little moment of, and then the change. And again, this could be, just a simple thing where you feel like the character is influenced by the outside environment or a prop where I feel like they sit more in that world. It's not just a performance where it's just I'm acting and move, gesturing my arms and that's it. There's more of a connection between the, the set and the props and maybe something with another character and so on. There's multiple things that you can do. Now, at the same time, you could use this idea for an audio piece. So I was a big fan when you have an audio piece with silence. And what if during that pause, the character is about to grab something. So you have a blah, 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 pause, and then blah, 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 blah. And during that pause, you would actually, right before the pause, the character would grab something and it's hot. And even though you don't hear it in the audio, the character could go, and it's just that quick release and then re-grab. And that's what happens during the pause and that's why the character pauses. And then you can have that slight adjustment and then the line continues and the character starts, you know, drinking how hot it is, like that. But I think this could be an interesting way of taking ownership of that pause, that little gap there where you can add your own ideas, you can add a specific acting moment that was not dictated by the audio. And I like that because it shows your original thinking, your creativity and your sense of entertainment and whatever you can do with original material and make it different. So it's not just a somewhat reinterpretation of the original text and original acting choices. So whatever you can do to add something original, I think that's, at least to me, is very interesting to watch. And something like this, even though it's simple in this shot is an interesting moment of, oh, I can use this pause to do this. And, and I can use that through a prop where it's something hot or really cold. The reaction could be, or something, ooh, that was, you know, maybe something kind of wet and weird and slimy. I don't know what you want to do, but, but it's just something that adds a little something to the character in terms of living in that space. I hope that makes sense. And if not, as always, you can leave comments and like, what, what are you talking about? And I'll gladly explain and in text form. But that's it. I know it's very short and I'm going to go through the rest of the show again in the future. So watch out for a part two one of these days or months or years in the future. But for now, those are the things that I noted. And as always, maybe you've seen other things and you just want to let me know in the comments. Maybe you have a scene where you go, that was really cool and I'll check it out and I can maybe pick that piece as a part two. But anyway, that is it. And as always, thanks for watching until the very end. You know the drill, the like and subscribe and all that good stuff. You know it. And I say thank you. And I will see you in my next clip.